this is a chill update video for you guys a lot of you guys are asking me a bunch of questions and the questions repeat themselves so i figured i'll just make a video first question what's going on with the quad you guys ask me i just rebuilt it we had a little horrific crash and it's ready to go what's going on with the body mounts they ran out of stock we're making more and they should be available and within probably like two three weeks something in this nature you build a new duel already uh yes i did this is it so we have a new dual motor arma with two 2028 1700s this one will go out to the runway this weekend as well and hopefully uh kick ass a lot of you guys ask me about the servo and our bat wings and other products if they're available speedrun springs and whatnot qs8s they're all available right now on amazon all the links are in the video description thanks to kevin talbot for this trick with the servo sure helps a lot and leaves a ton of room another question that a lot of you guys are asking me this one is pretty hot out there have you gotten the new relarlo brushless whatever whatever they call it video coming soon i'm gonna probably open this uh this weekend and uh, or prior to the weekend and we'll try maybe we'll take it to the runway with us motor a lot of you guys ask me about this v8 i just received all the components from that chinese company and soon i'm gonna be able to put this together and do something about it Raz. what's going on with raffles a lot of you guys are asking me because kevin talbot my friend started doing some raffles competitions if you will and they're super super cool fun and engaging and it's a win-win the community gets a lot for their time and their money and the creator gets to engage with community with the community so it's a lot of fun i'm going to do it soon i think i'm just going to raffle all my motors in once like all my used motors like this is for example from the dual motor this is going to be raffled a lot is going to be raffled probably i'm going to bundle all my used motors into one box and it's going to be like one dollar to participate and it's going to be a raffle or competition i think you're not allowed to say raffle or something on youtube another question that you guys ask a ton of Raz, what's going on with the carbon fiber titanium drive shafts for the armas and the hobos for those who don't know we design a carbon fiber titanium and chrome moly shafts drive shafts for the arma seven scale and the hobos and we created v1 it was amazing then we created v2 it was even more amazing and now we're creating a v3 so it's coming out soon it's a surprise we're trying to keep it hush hush because we kind of redesigned the entire um drive line of the arma and hobaos and it's going to come with a bunch of components and you guys are going to go crazy for it i'm sure but uh, a little bit of patience it's coming we did not ditch the idea of making drive shafts we are we were not in stock for a while now because we're we took some time to work on this new v3 we wanted to be the best drive shaft ever made uh like we did with the v2 but it's like a million times better so v3 drive shaft for the limitless v1 v, limitless v2 and the hobaos are coming out soon another subject that is super hot online lately and everyone likes to participate in are the qs8 qs8 connectors a lot of you guys are asking me, Raz, is the Perfect Pass QS8 V2 the same as a normal QS? What's the deal with it? Is it better? Is it the same? Blah, blah, blah. Here's the deal, and I tried to explain it on the first video when I launched those products. The QS8 by itself, the shape of it is standard. There's just like one shape of QS8, right? Uh, many vendors are liking their own specs. They're doing their own thing. They're manufacturing their own QS8s and I can't really vouch for the other ones. What I can tell you, and also I don't want to, I don't think that's our business model to talk about other brands or manufacturers. If they're not good, they're good. If they're the same or not. So I'm not going to, this is ours. What we can tell you though, are the specs for our QS8 V2, right? So other manufacturers, other vendors, other brands, not my business really this is ours and do you, you do you right so uh the measurements for our qs8 v2 by perfect pass are those measurements if you guys care for it obviously the diameter is eight millimeter the plastic materials that we're using is nylon with fibers uh the metal material that we're using is gold plated brass uh flame retardant rating that we are carrying is ul94 version zero temperature range obviously minus 20 celsius to a plus 100 celsius max voltage 500 volt dc now continuous current this one is a touchy subject uh a lot of the vendors that produce qs will tell you that this is 190 constant they're not really wrong right we're actually writing 110 just to be safe uh because there are some legal aspects to this one uh continuous current is designed at 110 and we're declaring 110 if you ask my opinion it's easily 200 
uh, or 190 like most of the other specs by other vendors. We wrote 110 on our uh, data sheet because our data sheet will actually go to many other companies and it might be used uh, at the military at some point as well. So this is our connectors. This is what we're using when it comes to material. Size is all about the same, but uh, we are using those specific materials and I can only speak for us. They look the same, but uh, I can only give you the specs for ours. Many other vendors are creating their own with their own versions. Max peak current burst, five seconds for 600 amps. We tested it for, actually soon I'm gonna show you. We tested it for 800 and we tested it for uh, actually 1,000. Uh, we are actually declaring that the max peak current for burst is five seconds for those connectors. Uh, the anti-spark resistor, of course, is a 5.1 ohms. The max wire gauge will be six, of course, and the weight is 40 grams. Someone actually tested it. Luke Miller, an awesome guy, he owns BBI. He's a well-known name in the radio uh, business. And uh, he said, hey, Raz, I would like to test some of your connector. Do you mind sending me connectors or do you mind sending me some? I was like, yeah, yeah sure, why not? Actually, it's gonna be fun, try them, right? So. We already tested them for the 600 burst, but I wanted him to do it uh, again on camera because why not? So he did, which uh, obviously passed with flying colors, 600 amps. He tried 20 seconds. I think it's too much for this connector, but five seconds for sure. A speed run, six, seven, eight seconds of 600 amps, no problem. And then he tried 800 amps and then he actually tried 1400 amps. And 1400 amps, actually the solder melted, like evaporated. Pretty interesting, you know what? Let me actually put this in the edit. You might uh, find some value in it. So enjoy, this is it. Test jig that we have today is a 2000 amp 12 volt supply and a 1000 amp uh, carbon pile. Just the other day we took this to 1800 amps with no breakdown or failures. We're also gonna use down here our FLIR imaging camera to be able to see how much heat is being generated by the connector. There's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 amps. And there's 20 seconds of exposure. The silicone wire is smoking. The connector is not. The biggest point of restriction is the wire. So we know that it can pass 600 amps. Let's go ahead and let's bring this on and let's pull 800 through it now. 800 amps, one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna take a good look at the connections on the plug. We're going to see that the solder hasn't melted, hasn't dripped, hasn't moved, and hasn't deformed in any way. So now we've taken it 200 plus amps past its loaded rating. And we're not seeing any failure on the part of the plug. The plug's not smoking, the connections aren't breaking down. So that tells us that the plug itself, the surface area on the plug is more than adequate to do the job tells us that the total surface area for the solder contact point is more than adequate to do the job. I think our biggest struggle here is our wire. Okay, let's move on to the 1000 amp test load. 100, 200, 300, 400, 600, 800, 1000, 1000, 1000, 1000, and off. Our solder work is still intact. And let's take the connector completely to failure now. And I highly doubt the connector's actually gonna fail. I personally think what's gonna happen is it's gonna come unsoldered. This is gonna get a little bit loud. Our carbon pile is gonna be screaming at us, but it doesn't matter, it's for science. All right, here we go. We're just gonna max the pile out and hold it here until it comes apart, ready? Let's go.
inside of the plug maintained its connection. The fingers maintained their integrity. I cannot speak to the temper or the annulment of the plug at this point, but I can say this. I put them on my car and run because everything around this plug failed and nothing on the plug itself was a cause of failure. So this was Luke Miller. Again, thank you so much, buddy, guys. Check out his YouTube channel if you're into that kind of stuff. That's exactly what this guy is doing. Pretty epic. Another question you guys ask, did we create our own mold for our QS8? Yes, like we said, we wanted it to be our plug with our specs. So this is our mold. Some of you guys will feel that it's a bit more snug and have better contact than other vendors. But this is just one small thing that uh, you will notice with that connector. Next subject. Speedrun Springs. Many of you guys ask me, Roz, how do I set up my car? Now, here's the deal. I haven't showed it in the launch video for those products because everyone have different cars, right? For example, this dual have four 8,000 million batteries. So it's super, super heavy. So after you put those batteries, actually that fits. Right now it's gonna be a little bit too high. Most of the time I will try to have my front about a finger high, splitter about a finger high. Obviously once you put those batteries, it's gonna be a little bit heavier. It's gonna be about finger high. That's how I like mine. And when it comes to the rear, I wouldn't have this gap less than like, I don't know, five, six, seven millimeters, of course. But I much rather you guys uh, start stiffer than normal. And then if you have your rear a little bit too stiff and a little bit too bouncy, make it softer slowly but surely versus making the spring here in the rear too soft, way too soft and having the car back foot. So the springs are great and they will do their job, but you have to adjust them properly, obviously, right? So... Uh, this is the setup that I have right now for the dual, but keep in mind, this is a very, very heavy dual with four batteries, two motors, two ESCs. So this is a very, very stiff setup. But of course, once you have like a single or whatnot, or only two batteries, and especially if those batteries are smaller, like 6.5 amps, uh, then you probably want something that is a little bit softer when it comes to the setup. Get your setup right. Again, for the front, I'm trying to have about a finger high for the splitter. With batteries, that's about what's gonna happen here. Maybe I can actually show you from the side, just so you guys have an idea of what the car is doing. You see that angle? Now remember, that's without batteries and a little bit higher than a finger. So with batteries, it's probably gonna sit about a finger high. And when it comes to the rear, I'm always trying to keep the rear as high as I can, sorry for the noises, that's probably the tripod holding the camera. I'm trying to have it as high as I can in the rear. I'm not even using my droop screws in the rear at all. So I sometimes remove them or open them entirely. So I'm trying to keep the car, of course, as high as I want in the rear and to allow the car to squat down a little bit. First of all, once you put some batteries and we have some weight, sorry for the noise, I'm gonna show you again. I'm adding the battery so the car is gonna go down anyway a little bit. And then once you load, it's going to squat a little bit. The faster you go, the more torque the car is actually asking for, the more the rear is going to squat. So this is when it comes to the speedrun spring setup. And of course, in the front, trying to keep it spongy here, if you will, but not too high. And I use the droop screws, of course, and drill here so you can actually reach those droop screws in a much easier manner. Next subject. I kept the best for last. This is the part that you're making money as our viewers or as our fans, right? As our fans. Uh, many of you guys post our products that you install in your cars on social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and other platforms, of course. And we are looking for a way to give back to the community. So it's something that we, you don't have to do and we don't have to do, but if there is a certain relationship, surely you want other users to enjoy our products, but we kind of want to give back to the community somehow and we have found the way. Our products are on Amazon anyway, right? And when you post a link, let's just say you install like a spring or a servo or something on your car and you're happy about it and you're sharing it with the community, some other Facebook groups that are dealing with RC cars, of course, and Armas, then you're posting the product and you're not putting the affiliate link. So Amazon Associate, if you want, you can actually register with them and you can post instead of just a normal link that we're actually making the, the money off the product and the profit, you can put an affiliate link and then you get a referral percentage. So for example, some guy, put, some people know about it and some people don't. So I think it's only fair that everyone knows about it. 
You installed a nice set of spring, spray drum springs by Perfect Pass on your car. You liking it? You show some pictures? Great. A lot of you guys put those links to Amazon and people actually go to Amazon and purchase them and everyone's happy. But if you post the affiliate link and all our products are supporting affiliate links, you just have to go and register with Amazon Associates. It's literally like five minutes. Then you actually get a cut from our profit. If you're not doing it, we're making the entire profit profit, but still something. And we want you guys to get something in return. It's only fair. So something that we're paying, that we're willing to pay and we're asking you to pay because we really find that giving back to the community will keep this going will keep us going will keep us developing more products and being so passionate about the hobby and everything so please allow us to give you guys back when you post a product post an affiliate link so you post a servo or a connector on facebook you can go to your own amazon and i'm going to show you guys how that looks once you go to your own amazon you will have once you're registered with amazon associate you can actually click and copy that link and this is the link you obviously have to be on the same page that you want to show. So for example, this is the Springs page, right? And you want to show how that looks and everything. And then you capture not just the normal URL, you capture the affiliate URL. So everyone enjoyed. It's a win-win for everyone. You enjoy the fact that your time was well compensated for. So you probably get out of all the sales, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars because many people will see it. The, the, the customers that will see those products they will be happy, of course, because they have a good product that helped them, right? That is priced correctly and priced right on Amazon. And then we're going to be happy because finally we can actually give back to the community that has been pushing us for quite some time, man. Let me tell you, quite some time. You guys have been supporting our products. You're loving what we're doing. You're respecting our time and our effort and whatnot. And it feels amazing. I really, we really want to give back to you guys. So I know I've, uh, it's like, sounds like a broken record. When you post our products, some guy posted our carbon fiber kits. And uh, I think Amazon affiliate is like 3% or 5% or something. He posted our carbon fiber kits on some kind of group that is not like an armor group. It was a group that not many people know, but it still had like a 2,000, 3,000 people um, uh, membership count. And uh, he made like 70 bucks within like two days because uh, he had like 10 people, you know, out of like a thousand people that saw the post purchasing the carbon fiber kit. Also a very cool thing, once you post an affiliate link and people buy our products, whatever they have in their cart, you're still getting three or 5% out of it. So if someone have like $500, let's just say a thousand, so it's even in their cart, and you happen to show them a product, even that a product that costs 30 bucks, and they add it to the cart, and then within the 24 hours, same 24 hours when they saw your link, they buy everything in the cart, you get a ton of money like from their car. So it's not really a way to become rich, but if you're already supporting us and giving us and sharing our products and links on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or any other social media, please allow us to pay you back for your time. It's something that we really want to do. We are the one paying for it. It comes from our pockets and we're asking you to do it because you guys deserve it. Guys, thank you so much. That's it for today. A little bit of a dry video, right? Not too much action and stuff, but still many things that I wanted to share with you guys. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And uh, we're going to take both of the cars to the runway probably tomorrow. And hopefully I'm going to make you guys proud with a nice number. Those two cars, man, let me tell you, they're supposed to rip. Dual 2028 1700s and the Quad 1717, both on 8S supposed to be pretty interesting. Guys, I'm Ross Schifrin. Thank you so much. By the way, just to respect the owners and managers of those Facebook groups, I don't want you guys to go and flood those groups right now with Perfect Pass products and affiliate links to make money. Uh, for those who want to share a product, if you're building something or install something, it'll be nice. But at the same time, I would like for the other users for those groups to have a nice experience and not have like a flooding of uh, Perfect Pass products and whatnot. I just don't think it's fair. If you're about to post pictures and show off your car and products that you have installed, then if you're already doing it, at least make money while doing so, right? So anyway, thank you so much for listening and I'll see you in the next one, which hopefully will be a video with a really high PB of some sort, like 210, yeah, that'll be nice. 215, I don't know, something crazy. Yeah, anyway, bye.